I think without a doubt, this is the best base model MacBook Pro that we had in a little while. We started off with the M1 MacBook Pro featuring that now ancient touch bar. After that, they just replaced the M1 chip with the M2 chip. And then last year we had the M3, which brought the brand new design that we know and love with the MacBook Pro, but it had eight gigabytes of RAM, unfortunately, which is criminal for a MacBook Pro. And here we are with the M4 MacBook Pro. And I gotta say, there's nothing wrong with the base model MacBook Pro M4, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, a half a terabyte of SSD storage. Yeah, so even though the design is exactly the same, Apple did upgrade the webcam to support center stage, which means the camera can track you if you're moving around just to keep you center stage, hence the name. But alongside with that, you also have desk view, which is really neat on how it works. It just gives you a desk view on what's going on on your desk. So the webcam upgrades, it makes a difference, especially if you're on a Zoom call or you're doing a class or Microsoft Meets, whatever you're doing, this is gonna come in handy. And uh, speaking of creative workflows, this also has a nano texture option, which is People have been waiting for this. People have been wanting this on the MacBook for a little while, ever since the introduction of the studio display and even the Pro Display XDR. So we finally have it on the MacBook. And unfortunately, I didn't go with that option this time around. Just judging with my experience with the iPad, I made an entire video on this. Um, I just see myself using the glossy display. Just the contrast of the display, I appreciate. I just love inky blacks. But if you're working outside, uh, or if you're in a coffee shop or you buy a large window, the nano texture is gonna mitigate those reflections. And all of that aside, before I even talk about the M4 power, I appreciate this silver color. This is just such classic Apple. Uh, me being a user of the M3 Max, I didn't jump the gun to the M4 Max yet. I have the Space Black. It has a bit of fingerprints going on, but comparing the Space Black to the silver, I gotta say, I miss the silver color. It looks more cleaner, it looks more professional, but the space black color just looks more sophisticated. I've done an entire color comparison comparing the M3 slash M4s, the same design, comparing space black versus silver, and I even throw in space gray too, which space gray is no longer an option now for the M4 series. It's still worth a watch if you guys are trying to decide on which color you should go with. So let's talk about the power of the M4 chip. This is Apple Silicon we talk about here. It's only getting better from here on out. If you have an M1, M2, M3, you know what you're getting yourself into with the M4. It's gonna be faster, it's gonna be more efficient. You know, Apple did increase the battery just thanks to the efficiency of the M4. Well, you're rarely gonna hear the fans and yeah, Apple Silicon is definitely a game changer for me and you can ask any creator, you can understand how the impact of Apple Silicon just made the world a difference for creators around the world. And if you still have an Intel-based Mac, this is gonna be a world of difference. This is gonna be a big leap. You're gonna notice the, how quiet the fans are. Everything is faster. You have access to more features thanks to macOS Secura, such as um, Apple Intelligence, which is a game changer for me. Been using a bunch of the writing tools for sending out emails to make them more professional or make it sound more friendlier or concise to everything. Apple Intelligence is for another video for another day. It's just gonna be a world of new features when you switch to Apple Silicon. I've been doing my testing, editing videos, surfing the web, and of course I have Photoshop, Lightroom open. 16 gigs of RAM is perfect for the average consumer. But when it comes down to video editing, of course I'm gonna need more RAM, especially me having professional cameras. This is the Sony a7S III the Sony A7R5. I'm filming videos as 4K, 422, 10-bit. That demanding taxing video Kodak is absolutely bananas for um, a computer with only 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, even just maybe the GPU too is a little low because if you stack up the 4K footage on top of each other, then I'm using third-party plugins, which is gonna use a lot of the GPU, then, very quickly, I'm gonna realize that this is just not enough for me. But for editing simple shorts or TikToks on iMovie or even Final Cut Pro, which I'm using Final Cut Pro 11, I think this is perfectly fine. But for professional cameras or for the professionals, because this is a MacBook Pro, want more GPU power. But I think if you're that person that occasionally 
go away once in a blue moon. You wanna use the SD card slot, maybe use Apple's built-in photo editor, then I think this is perfectly fine because you do have the additional Thunderbolt ports. You have that SD card slot, you have the HDMI, and you have a great display to view the pictures on. I think that's perfectly fine. And it's not to say that this isn't powerful, it just isn't for me. But I am pretty impressed for what this is though. Being on pages, creating presentations, uh, creating Excel files. This is definitely a MacBook that a lot of people are gonna love this year. And of course, all of that, and it's whisper quiet. It's whisper quiet. The battery life is absolutely insane. It lasts all day. And without a doubt, you're not gonna be disappointed. If you guys wanna see a gaming test, I'm gonna be testing out the same exact M4 MacBook Pro. And we're gonna play some games, see if it lags, if it stutters. Um, so make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on if you guys wanna see that. You know, other than that, everything else is perfect. The only thing I really miss I miss the glowing Apple logo on the back. And like I said in the very beginning, this is without a doubt the best base MacBook Pro that we had in a little while. And all of that for $1,600, that's a pretty bargain. 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 SSD storage. I wouldn't even waste time upgrading just due to the fact how expensive Apple upgrades are. Uh, and by the time you turn around, you're getting into M4 Pro territory. And I think maybe for the sweet spot for semi creators is to go to the M4 Pro. I would even say nowadays, I recommend at least one terabyte, but at that point you can hook up external drives, get the Samsung T7, T9. There's even Thunderbolt hard drives you can get. And I would always recommend that just because at some point that one terabyte is gonna run out of space too as well and you're gonna need to go out and buy an external drive anyway. And right now, this video is not sponsored, but that's why I picked up a NAS uh, cloud-based storage. That setup is coming soon, by the way. So I don't even have to worry about space no more. Everything, all I have to do is just connect to the NAS, do the Wi-Fi, I could click and drag files, access it anywhere around my home, and I'm good to go. And that's why I never really worry about storage. I back up every single one of my videos thanks to that NAS. So that is my review of the MacBook. I think this is a fantastic laptop that I highly recommend. If you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on to see that gaming stress test. And you guys don't wanna miss that. You guys really don't wanna miss that one. And make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and on X at Simply Pops. And other than that, I hope you all have a simple day. Peace.